welcome to Down on Fire right here on High TV. We're checking out the all new beautiful 1864 at Golf Face Hotel. It's looking sunny. It's my first time here after this facelift happened and I'm telling you it's been done by people who have great taste. Uh, today on the show I have a birthday girl who is celebrating a birthday and we somehow put our little shoot party as well uh, onto a schedule. Uh, I'm sure she doesn't need any introduction. I have Kimali. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Danu. Thank you for having me. And uh, Kimali, you have been, uh, I think you have maintained a brilliant portfolio uh, in terms of the work that you do. And I must say, you're one of the uh, very few people who headed the whole tourism sector who maintained a very colorful social media at the same time. Uh, your work was quite seen and it was put out there. Uh, tell me about the time when you took over this position and you took it over at the time when nobody wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually I took it over at the time when, just before Covid, uh, 2019 December. And it was already by that time it was it, yeah, I came, bit, yes. Yeah. I realised when I took the job that it is an institution, four institutions. Uh, I think I was the first chairperson of uh, all four institutions and as a woman. But for me, I came realising there's a challenge. We need to do a system change, we need to put automation, we need to really change the organization, mm. right? And the image of Sri Lanka. So the whole concept was try to position Sri Lanka the way it deserves. Mm. And I felt that for the last uh, 30 years or so, we've done tourism. But I really feel and I today too feel that we've never positioned our country and that's the journey I started. Mm. And social media, Danu, you asked me, is because there was hardly any social media. Sri Lanka tourism hardly used social media. Uh, to be very honest, I actually went for the launch of their Instagram page just a few years before. And I said, aren't we like a hundred years late? I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we did. We got a social media, we did a tender, we got some people to do social media. Professionals. This is something that people don't like. It's mm. not a friend of a friend who we give the job to. We give it to professionals. So I gave it to pro three, four, five professionals, creative agency, names you know, uh, digital marketing, whatever. And we launched and I gave them a target and I said, okay, Sri Lanka is at 200,000 or 100,000 or whatever. And mm. I, got to join. I said, I wanted 9 million, mm. 9 million followers. And they said, why 9 million? I said, that's because Australia has 9 million followers <laughs> and they got 20 million visitors. So that's our target. I yeah. said, that's what we should be. And it's like leaps and bounds we went. Mm. We got influencers, we got bloggers. Uh, it was exciting in a way. Mm. It was exciting. And then what was really nice was that we uh, did a live streaming of wildlife parks in Sri Lanka during COVID. Mm. So it was live streamed overseas particularly. I got this idea because in Spain actually there was a famous opera singer, mm. um, I think it was Spain or Italy, who sang on the piazza there right. during COVID, height of COVID. Mm. And it moved me and I thought, we don't have famous opera singers, mm. but we have wildlife. So, uh, so we sort of went for a live stream with 9 million followers all over the world, following Sri Lanka wildlife and everyone in the world was locked down. Mm. So I think social media is critical to mm. reposition Sri Lanka. It's vital for it's vital. position in the country. Uh, you know, uh, one of the questions that I always ask is the fact that Sri Lanka has a tagline, has, has been changed multiple times, it has gone to different uh, advertising gurus to be looked into and we came up with SO Sri Lanka. And? <laughs> yeah, so Sri Lanka. Yes, yeah, so Sri Lanka was not made during my time. Yeah. Uh, would I have chosen it? I'm not sure. But you know what happens is that was the 2015-19 government that s selected that and being you know if you every time a government changes you can't change a tagline mm. so what I did was I worked with it right you know so enticing so exciting so you know use the so but frankly a tagline Danu is not really 100% critical for you to position your country mm. if you but take the amount of money that was used to come up with just a soul so, in front of Sri Lanka. Yeah, I, the money that was there, but I felt that it was an agency that created that. Look at Maldives. What's their tagline? There Actually, isn't. I really don't know. You don't know. That's yes, what I'm saying. My point is, what is Australia's tagline? They get 20 million tourists. There isn't. What is Thailand's tagline? Not mm. really. You have Malaysia, truly That's Asia. A you have India, incredible oh, India. India. But a tagline, I feel somehow we shouldn't get stuck on a tagline. Uh, tagline is nice, it's useful. What I inherited, I didn't want to change it. 
I just worked with it, mm. right? And I think we shouldn't spend a, like you know people shouldn't worry about the tagline. What we should do the, though, and the, that that journey I started actually, and I'm proud to say that, and with the team and with professionals, a lot of professionals, and funding agencies helped, is that we started positioning Sri Lanka, Condé Nast Travel, Travel and Leisure, you know, CNN, uh, BBC, Al Jazeera, mm. you know, all Bloomberg, all these magazines. We started positioning it. When you you know, positioning and branding. You branded and position your product. Mm. See how you've done it. It's not that you say, oh, you know, we are cheap, so come to us. Mm. No, that's not positioning yeah. and branding. And positioning and branding takes 10 years, 20 years, 25, 30 years. I've seen that I've lived with mm. a company that set a brand through my 28 years of marriage. Is that, you know, positioning a brand, it has to be consistent, it has to be authentic. And, you know, you need to keep on at it. You can't keep changing. So I didn't want to change so Sri Lanka because of that. But I think that we need to continue the work we started in terms of position in the country as a wellness destination. All of what Asia has to offer. Uh, uh, island of well-being. I love that. The island of well-being. I always say that in the media overseas as well. The island of well-being because that encompasses everything. The wildlife, the nature, the food, the ayurveda, the, the hell of the kama, the history, the culture. The people, the smile, the, 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 it encompasses everything. Mm. And I think that we please must not go down the road again of 30 years where we try to sell cheap mm. uh, and say, oh, exchange rate is low, so now our country is cheap. No, it needs to be, Sri Lanka needs to be on that Condé Nast travel book. It needs to be a, a bucket list aspirational product that you want to visit Asia, Sri, Sri Lanka, Lanka is, is perfect. Place. Yeah, it's you know, a, that it's kind of a place. thing. Yeah. Definitely. Anyone who has been here has never gone back with a bad heart. They've always has always loved it. The person who runs this place, Catherine is here, I think. Uh, I must say she she always is she loves Sri Lanka. Absolutely. She she's so sun kissed. I think she's perfect here. Uh, <laughs> we need to get into a break. We are going to see you on the other side. Do stick around. We have so much more to talk about. She has a, a law background and I want to know how how is arguments at home? Like who wins? And <laughs> we do come back. Down on fire right here on high TV, your luxury channel. We're checking out this beautiful place. Can you see how cool it looks? Uh, and we're having vegetarian because the birthday girl is vegetarian, <laughs> so we are going to keep it that way. Now, I wanted to ask you now, when you take up, when you took up this fancy position, you were not given a salary. No, you were, I was offered a salary. Oh, right, okay. uh, I didn't <laughs> take a salary or a car or anything. Right. Even when I traveled Are overseas. Are they offered a salary? Though? Yes, yes. Ah, right. It comes. All the chairmen are offered a salary. You get $650 a day when you go overseas oh. and then they pay a ticket and their hotel. None of which I took. No way. And I didn't make money on tenders or anything else either. Hmm. No, for me, Danu, it was not about money. I was. Early on in life, I was a sportswoman, very hard working, committed, and all that. Yeah, your then I became a and my sporty physique <laughs> <I> look alike. <laughs> so I'm very hard working, almost a workaholic, and I love doing something right. I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm very courageous. I want to do what is right. I want to, you know, the system change, good governance. I did that all through my life. Mm. So when I was asked to take that position, uh, and said, you know, first they said take three, and then I said, uh, then they said four, and I said, no, shall I just take three? Mm. So no, 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 you can do four or do all four. Yeah. But that was the best thing, because nowhere in the world, I I didn't realize this, but nowhere in the world you have tourism institute broken up into three like that. Yeah. Only in Sri Lanka. Correct. So in, I did a study on Singapore and Thailand and India and Australia. All is one chairman or chairperson or mm. chairwoman or whatever, mm. is because you need to do multiple things. You know, while they are doing the registration and registering everybody, you need to promote it, investments promotion. Mm. Huh? You need to promote investments. 
right? So, and how do they build? What is a five star? What does it look like? All that, that whole story. And then you have to promote the destination. Mm. So you can't really break it up. Yeah, into and you three. can't. One person can't be running in one direction, and the, it, does so it has to all sort of fall into place. Um, the, one of the questions that I asked before going to a break is because your husband is also very strong-minded. If he has an opinion, he has an opinion. I I heard him give a speech. He was like, you know, there's no not enough support from many of these people for hotels. He just says it as he says it. He doesn't care who is there. How is it at home? Because both of you are so strong in your opinions and your viewpoints. Who wins an argument? I want to know that. Yeah, we are both very strong and passionate yeah. with regards to topics. Malik is way better read than me. Uh -huh. That's one of the things that I was like. I liked him uh -huh. because he was smarter than me. <laughs> That's what I originally when I met yeah. him. I thought, oh my god, this guy is smarter, better read than me. <laughs> so I liked it. But in terms of arguments and really being honestly, it's me. <laughs> Good. He's honestly, not here. We will just go in. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's me. But yeah. generally, on like position in the country with its tea yeah. or with its fisheries or agriculture, we have like really interesting discussions mm. because we are we both read a lot. Right. We are very sort of global yeah. in that sense. And all bounce ideas. Yeah. Totally, totally. Now, running Dilma and having these hotels and all of these, was it a conflict of interest when you took this position? Good question. Actually, I was really concerned at the beginning. Hold on, yeah. I wanted to celebrate that moment. Thank you, Pinch. The good question part. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. The, no, yes, I looked at the um, Tourism Act because I was thinking, oh my God, because we have investments in plantation, mm. we have investments in this, all of the printing and packaging and tourism. And, but the Act clearly says that you shouldn't be a shareholder or whatever. And I never really worked for Dilma. Mm. I always was you a career married, woman. Yeah, you were married I was a career, into the Yeah, I was married into the family. Yes, I have learnt a lot. Positioning a country, positioning a brand. I see that with Dilma in 28 years of marriage, but I also see that in what is happening now with uh, Malik's products is that I remember at the beginning when they were opening these hotels and $1,000, $1,000, the, the experts, uh, the veterans said, Machang, you can't charge $1,000 for a hotel. Are you mad? You can't do it. And I remember going back to that hotel room and say, Malik, go for it. You know how to do it, go for it. And he done it. So I think that as a country, we sell too cheap. We always try to sell on pricing, who's the cheapest. I think we are not ambitious enough perhaps sometimes and that we don't have the vision and the capability. So we become like a trader mentality. Mm -hmm. You see that in other industries as well, actually you see the tea as well. So it's unfortunate if it's pepper or cinnamon, we need to add value, put a brand and upsell our product. And a lot of people are not willing to do that because mm. they find it, you know, you give it $50, I'll give it a 30, 45, you get 40 and you get it. Yeah. So, and that's why in, in 2018 also, a lot of the companies were not doing well as a banker, I know that. Mm. Because they were running like earning income from commissions from shops and you know, this kind of yeah. thing. But Sri Lanka can Dano be positioned and a lot of work has been started. And if we continue for the next 25 years doing that, mm. we will be there. Yeah. And I was saying this to you before is that if you look at some of the airlines, how they position our country, their airlines, right? Mm. Their they brands, show their yeah. first class and they show the bed and they show the, the best of the airline. But 85% of the people are behind, mm. right? So you need to position a country and be consistently positioning something good. That's when foreign investment will come. That's when foreign brands will come. Foreign brands, some people are, you know, we have a little bit of island mentality mm. where we don't like foreigners to come in. And I embrace foreigners. Look at. Dubai has 1 million Emiratis, 11 million foreigners. Mm. Uh, look at uh, Qatar and they bring in, look at this restaurant for example, what they have done here. It's phenomenal. Mm. Uh, so I think that we need to embrace uh, expats coming in. We need to embrace foreign brands. They bring best practice. Yeah. They bring a sort of uh, uh, good governance and you know the auditing and, and that's also the whole thing. And also a chance for us to grow and I, I always feel like brown is the best color. Yes. Uh, because then you don't have any shade. So I think in all terms, knowledge in terms of skills, I think everyone merged together adds so much. Uh, wanted to ask you, um, do you, would you ever get into politics? Don't answer me now. We'll come back with that answer. But right now, I just want to eat this beautiful thing that's in front of me. I'm sure you'd have found the name at the bottom somewhere. Because if I try to say it, it's just going to be a disaster. We're going to see you run up. Please stick around. It's done on time.
Welcome back to the show, our final segment right here uh, with uh, Kimali. Now, I wanted to ask you, politics. You have the look right now for it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be getting into it? Put it this way, my family has been in politics. Sajan Kandalavala, my grand uncle. That time politics was different, Nanu. Uh, so in the current context, I think not. Mm. In the current context, no. Uh, but if there is ever a need or there is opportunity for me to genuinely serve the country, and I don't mean it in a cliche, whatever. I've mm. done it for two and a half years. I've done it before. Mm. We have served the country. And if there is a real system change, doing sincerely something, uh, with the background of the legal as well as banking and now working for two and a half years in government, I know I've got into the system to tell you how to change the system. You know the cracks in the system. I know the, what's wrong with it. I know what's right with it. And I think that I'm happy to help anybody mm. uh, who is genuine, uh, who has a proper vision, uh, who is competent and genuinely loves the country. Uh, because what I'm good at, and I tell you, is that I'm good at executing things, implementing things. I have a list. I will, Somehow you know, during you know. COVID, I will, you know, reach out to people. I'll reach out, you know, because I came from the private sector, I didn't have to really like, I would talk to a minister or I would talk to a secretary because normally there's a structure yeah. involved. And then I would talk to the ambassadors and the funding agencies. And so if you want a job done, I think I'm quite good at that and getting it done. But to answer the question right now, politics, no, I don't think. I, I would uh, fit in at the moment. Okay, but uh, you know they always say when you work for the government sector, there's so many barriers. There's always restrictions. Somebody's pulling something off. And was it like that for you? Was it an easy approval process? Was it easy to get something done, implement? Good question. Actually, because a lot of people say that because we're outside. A lot of people haven't read the procurement guideline to start with. Before I got, came to work, I have already read cover to cover the procurement guideline of government. Mm. I understood the laws. I understood the regulations. So I think that's not the answer, uh, actually. Yes, you need about 10, 12 signatures. But I would talk even to the PN. You know, if you track it, and if you are willing to put in that and follow it up, you can. Get, you can. Mm. It's not easy, but if you know the law, but a lot of people don't know it. Mm. And, and also I, the system will eventually change to one signature yeah. or an email, yeah, making yeah. it so much more easier. Yeah, the e-procurement. Yeah. They started a project on e-procurement and in fact I volunteered tourism at that time mm. to do e-procurement and then that didn't they materialize. Okay. But in terms of technology, like we put all the registration online, it was manual, right? After we came, we, everything is now automated. Mm. Even in organization, if you want to book a car, now you put it online and then the driver gets automatically SMS mm. saying. So we did that in government. Right. So I know that system change, if you also, we all, if you really want system change, Danu, we must get into the system yeah. in different ways. And that's the only part. way we'll know. Yeah. And we can do it. you want to dig it. into something sweet? Yes. Because, uh, like this is something I can't like wait looking at it. <laughs> and this is like using all local fruits and... It's fabulous. Yeah, huh? it looks... You had this last time you said... I've had it came. before, yeah. yeah. This is one of my favorite restaurants, actually. Yeah. This is why I can never be thin, but this has no sugar in it. It has, mm. yeah, natural, no? Oh, wow. I'm marrying the person who made this, just letting you all know. <laughs> but uh, I also wanted to touch, uh, every time we when a minister changes, the government changes, projects that the government started just stops. And then another set of projects coming and you have like half done things sitting and waiting. Do you think that will ever change? Depends on the uh, personalities involved. Now mm. with regards to for myself what happened was we took the 2015-19 projects and we continued. Mm. We didn't change the logo, we didn't do, we continued and added on. What we added on is two specific areas. One is technology, right? Like the tourism app, mm. we've, done, we've done all the work, so it's just now only to be implemented. Mm. Looking after experiences, like we identify 5,700 sites island-wide, right? So we added. Mm. We didn't remove. Yeah. Wow. Oh my wow. gosh. Today, so oh. Catherine with the cake. <laughs> Absolutely very happy birthday, Kimani. Thank you so much. Sure, a beautiful day, beautiful Thank year. Thank you, gosh. <laughs> Let's all sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. 
Kim Ali. Happy birthday to you. Let's cut it. I don't have a knife. Do I don't I? have a knife either. We'll get to it. Uh, bring in the knife. Bring in the knife. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. I really. You, sh you should so cut it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I don't know. You must be like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to ask your age. It's not nice to say. I'm happy to say my age. I'm proud of my age. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you look like this. I'm, you can say it. Tell I'm 58 me. years and I'm proud of it. Yes. I have like loads this. of experience. Uh -huh. uh, and you to are it. into. You do yoga, you work out, to, uh, yeah, gym and, and you workout. also eat vegetarian. Yes. <laughs> now no Botox done. Not, <laughs> not <laughs> yet, not yet. I don't want to say never. Ne yeah, yeah. If I require, I will do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we need to keep it all up there. <laughs> yeah, no, why not? Gravity I should not uh, win that. I haven't <laughs> been, uh, I'm not averse to that. Can I give you a play? Oh, thank you. I have already found one. Thank you. She understood the requirement of my body. Yeah, I, I thought. <laughs> Not my mouth, but my body. <laughs> Thank you. I get the message. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we, were, we were talking about this. I really hope you have an event planned today or something for you, whether your husband you. is giving yes. you a nice evening. And my two daughters have arranged stuff oh, living in London, there. though. Yeah. And, they're, and uh, they're both like, they are doing their own thing now. Yes. So mama is not needed yeah, to... They are like 26, 25, much yeah. older. And they one is a doctor and the other one is? One is a doctor, other one is working in City of London in finance. Okay. Doing mergers and here? acquisitions. Younger one may, and I hope mm. she does, uh, to join our family also. But uh, elder one coming back, sh unlikely at the moment, uh, because she wants to specialise in whatever. So, Question. <laughs> one question before we go. From the time we were in school, we have been always taught Amos, income, ring, tea, rubber, spices. We have been always taught this in school. Absolutely. Tea is not running good for us right now, is it? Tea is doing well for the people who have had a, has a brand, who is adding value. So that's why you need to position our country in everything now. No? Because at one time we were just flying. We were just, yeah. yeah. Right now, the, even other countries have caught that market as well. Yes, because when multinationals and people pack tea, they call it Ceylon tea, they dilute it at putting Kenyan or whatever other teas and gradually our tea content came down. But we need as citizens who love our country, everything we do, we should position it, brand it, whether it's a pepper, whether it's a cinnamon, whether it's the tea, whether it's the rubber, whether it's a fish mm. that we do, we export, whether it's the graphite and ilmenite, we're exporting it mm. raw. And Danu, there's so much that can be done. And, and God has been so kind to this country. Absolutely. He absolutely. has just given. And I believe that if we all put our heads together, Sri Lanka, we can win, we will succeed, we will thrive. Brilliant. Uh, sad to say, even if you're a coffee lover, Sri Lanka had the best coffee at one time. Yes. I think it's, it's starting again, which is a great thing. Yes. Um, Kimani, I must say, thank you so very much for being here. Thank you for being so, uh, what can I say, so full of positivity and you have a bounce to you and I really like that. Uh, thank you for joining thank us you, today Danu. on Danu on Fire. I'm soon going to have her on date with Danu. We need to ask harder questions and I'm ready. <laughs> and thank you for being here. I wish you all the very best for this wonderful year ahead and many, many birthdays to come. Thank you, Danu. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the crew that arranged all this. Thank you. Thank you to 1864 for your hospitality. Uh, I must say, it's uh, Catherine here. Uh, she's always so generous. And to the team at Golf Hotel, we will see you soon. Till then, you keep smiling. It's a wrap.